The Bobby Bones Show now. For King and Country. Well, the, the way you guys got here, a little unconventional, I will admit, because, first of because all, thank you. you never invited us, Bobby. Amy's invited us before. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's me. That's on me. Anyway, yeah, yeah. so, uh, <laughs> also, we're, we, like, know your family, and if we're just having you in willy-nilly every day, they're like, well, that's, like, some sort of nepotism. Touche. Yeah. And, and also, our last name's Small Bone, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. You've got to keep the bones separated. Exactly, which is why we also don't have Matt on. Yeah. I, I heard. Mm-hmm. You did have Matt on? No, that's why we don't, but he texts in all the time, and he's on the air in different ways. <laughs> yeah, okay. I just talk yeah. about him. Yes. <laughs> okay. And he's like, my pastor just said. Then I was going to get said, jealous. Uh, yes. Then I was going to be right. like, we've got a problem here. Yeah. So here's what happened. You have millions of fans all over the world, and two of them are Eddie and his wife. Right, Eddie? Mm-hmm, that's right. And your wife wanted to go to the show? She said, is there any way you can get, get us tickets to go see the band for a Christmas concert. I'm like, well, look, I look on the calendar. I'm like, they're coming to the Opry. That We can do this. So what better to ask Amy, since she knows you guys. She's like, oh, Amy, can you hook me up with some tickets? And so she does. And Amy, you, this is no small feat to get tickets. The world, this is like getting Taylor Swift tickets. Right. To see yeah. them. I know. The, mm-hmm. the site crashes, basically, when you try to get tickets to freaking country. Right. So, yeah, I sent off a note. No problem. I get a text back. We'll call under Eddie's name. Night of. Ready to go. I send Eddie a note, and Eddie's like, oh, my gosh, amazing. Thank you. Well, then turns out, I guess Eddie's going to be out of town the night of the show. So mm-hmm. then we have to awkwardly be like, okay. Awkward. Sorry, yeah, we don't were very need upset. those. Yes, exactly. I knew it. You probably spent the whole night going, I bet they hate us. Because well, we, call, we called up the Opry personally. Yeah, we See? Said, hey, we're out of comps, guys. But Right. And so. It's Eddie's wife. Then, mm-hmm. which, which I'm so glad it worked out that way because now I feel like we get a very intimate performance from them. I'm still embarrassed, but that's okay. Oh, so am I, but. Yeah. So we got a couple things we're going to do here with For King and Country. We're going to do a Christmas song and then we're going to do an original. And first, let me say, just you guys are awesome. Just musically, sonically. What you're able to do, how big you're able to sound, just just A+. plus. So I want to compliment you there. Awesome. Secondly, you know, both of you have my hair at different stages in my life. I'm just going to say that. That's <laughs> so true. Mm? So maybe we could, you could be our brother. Mm, yeah, I could. <laughs> I just, you're, Funny accent. Me? Yeah. Or you? No, you. Can you do my accent? Of, of course I can. Was that hey, it? this is Bobby Bones. This is the Bobby Bones Show with For King and Country. Thanks for being here. That sounds so normal. It almost sounds <laughs> not hillbilly enough, yeah. but that's so. That's such an American. As a kid in Australia, do you grow up doing American accents as a joke? We not, see, oh, you get all your movies and stuff. Yeah, so. not really, because uh, you know, Australia's always been a little bit about like the it, kind of the younger brother that looks up to America. So you don't really want to be like America because you're kind of actually jealous mm. of America, if that makes sense. Well, in so. America, we always do like kangaroo and boomerang jokes. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're like, oh, the bar, script on the Bobby, boomerang. Yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. We're yeah, aware. Cool. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> we're aware. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a Christmas song first, and then I want to get into a little more of you guys. But here is for King and Country. And what are you guys, Luke, what are you guys going to do here? We're going to play a song for Eddie's wife. Um, because this is the song that she probably wanted to see, right, Eddie? This is the one. Yeah, this she is mentioned. the one. Yes. And this is going to be. Uh, this is the little drummer boy. God willing. And, oh, and, it is and the one. It is. Yes. It is the, the one. one. And That's I it. just want to set the record straight. If you're just listening and not watching, we have set a world record on your stage, right? More Seventy-three people. people on stage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. The stage is like the size of a nickel, but somehow they're standing on top of each other. This is why New York City did skyscrapers, actually. Mm. So you get more people right on, go uh, high. That's true. Well, and here's the other thing. Live, we're in elevators. So that next time we're going to have to bring the elevators. Wait, what? We're in, we, we're in, we go up like 50 these, feet in the air. These elevators. Elevators. It's like the Australian version of Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. Yeah, your shows, you do that, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Dang. We take out a really big insurance Eddie's policy. Eddie's wife could have yeah, seen you. Yeah, we're she really missing you out been now. There, yeah. <laughs> look, look, look. For King and Country, I don't think I've, I'll say this, and we'll come back in a second with you guys. Never has an artist been in and performed to the point where I go, I'm a, I gotta go see them live. That has never happened until right then. That's the first time ever someone's performed and I went, I should probably go watch this live because it's that good. So we that, do have two tickets spare. That's what I heard. <laughs> hey, Joel, you and Luke have been playing together since since how old? Well, it, it depends on how you look at it. So our sister was sort of a gospel Christian artist, and dad managed her. He needed cheap labor. We all homeschooled. He saw he had five sons, and so we became the road crew. And incidentally, started doing background vocals together at some point. For oh, her or for other for, people? No, for her. Okay. For her. 
exclusively. We were we weren't good bad. enough to do it for other people. No. Got it. It's it family. Her. Got it. Yeah, yeah. It's a family deal. And then um, we didn't get on in our teenage years. You know, he's my younger brother. He grew taller than me. He's a better sportsman. All the things that an older brother really dislikes. And it was uh, he was nineteen. I was twenty one. He torn his torn his ACL in a basketball match, and he felt sorry for me. And I felt sorry for him. So How I was tall like, are hey, you? Why don't we start a band? Huh? How tall are you? I'm about six four, six four, six five. But I mean, if you were to cut your hair, like what are you? Five nine? <laughs> what, what <laughs> five nine? Five nine with the hair? Cut the hair? Five nine? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. You know what that's <laughs> like. So Samson got weaker. Yeah, Luke yeah I do. That's why I grow it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when does? Well, I'm assuming too. You guys had a bunch of names before for King and Country oh, since yeah. you've been together so long. What, what were those? If you'd had other names, what were they? Plus well, the, bad ones. Yeah, we had a lot of bad ones. I mean, at first we would do the whole like, we're not going to leave this coffee shop until we find a name. And usually we walked out with Joel and Luke. <laughs> I'm Joel, he's Luke. We're going to be called Joel and Luke. He's sort of Dan and Shay. Joel, you know? had, Joel had another great one. Um, uh, Osterville. That was one. Yeah, that was one. Because we said we would make up a word. It's Australia to Nashville. People call Nashville a village. Oh, Osterville. Abbreviation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Oz. Glad you didn't stay with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And literally, we did, a, we did a show in Australia with that uh, name. And Australians are pretty forthright in their opinions. And we, went, <laughs> we were doing a festival and people came up and they're like, Yeah, mate, um, I don't even know how to say your, your name. So we, we, we actually reverted back to Joel yeah, like, we at the festival. We're like, all right, guys, festival. we're out. And bad. when did For King and Country come up? And I'm assuming it's For King, who is Jesus. I'm just assuming. I don't know this. Is yeah. that what it is? G- well, it's sort of, there's a British, if you ever watch like. Oh, it's not. Never mind. I'm wrong. Uh, Downton Abbey. There's sort of this British mantra that they would always chant going into battle. They would say, oh, for King. Like Zazu says uh, it in okay. Lion King. It's like, oh, for King and Country. I don't watch shows with accents. Anyway, so. that's yeah, fine. I'm to- yeah, I don't like accents. So. very American yeah, yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, he, so we kind of thought, well, that's a cool phrase. And then I think there's that great overtone of like, why do we do music? Like you said, like God, people, country, you know. Mm-hmm. And so for King and Country, was it in a coffee shop? We're not leaving the coffee, and that's what no, you have? No, it, no. So Joel had come into the um, studio one day. I mean, this was 12 years ago or so. <laughs> And he come in with the the name All the King's Men, which was a cool name. That is a cool name. Uh, and our producer at the time spun around, and he said, "Oh no no, what about the what about for King and Country? You know the old British mantra that they used to chant before going into battle." And we'd always wanted something that felt like it had purpose, that felt like it had meaning. It just wasn't like just a just a cool name. You know what I mean? And uh, I think we kind of both looked at each other at that time. The other big thing was is it was available on MySpace. Yeah, oh, which was yeah. a big deal. Got to remember that ten yeah. years ago. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. But, What's the CMT Crossroads Christmas that you guys are doing? Like, what exactly does that entail? This sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. But Breland's there. Okay, Chrissy that's Max it. Because always there are other artists that come in. Yeah. So Breland, who's, we love him. Chrissy yeah, right. Metz, who was on This Is Us and is a great yep. singer. Yep. So they come in and sing songs with you. Are they doing yeah. your songs? Yeah, well, kind of Christmas songs versions. aren't really our songs, but our versions of but Christmas songs. But don't we all yeah. own them? That, oh, Touché. public domain. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So they come in and you know they're singing these renditions that you know we've created and and they sing along with us. It was quite I- I- fascinating though because they all had to learn these songs very very quickly. So yeah. to their to their credit, it turned out uh, really great. Do you guys keep a, a prompter for Christmas songs so you don't mess up the words? Luke should. I probably <laughs> should, but I don't. I will say uh, I, I I messed Although up. Although I've song. had a lot of because yeah, we're right in the middle of a, an American Christmas tour, so we've had I've had quite a few fumbles. The problem with Christmas songs trip. is you do sing them every year, but there's eleven months in between the exactly. time that you and sing And there's it. like nine verses in all of them. Well, verses that so, we don't grow and up they learning. They all sort of no. have the same infl- So you just sort of so get people them do the same thing confused. that we do. Which is you just pick your favorite verses mm. and that becomes the song, right? And if you so forget, then you, just do it again. And then if you're into grandparents' uh, you know, church, you're never going to know the verses that they get into there. Yeah, that's definitely true. The CMT Crossroads Christmas, is that in Nashville? Yeah. Okay. Down at the, fr- the factory. In front. Okay. So tw- on the 12th, that's where you can go there. But then the Christmas show, you got Indianapolis on the 15th, Fort Wayne on the 16th, Grand Rapids on the 17th, the two Opry shows. The globe- What's the global live stream? Is that at a place? It's the Opry show. Oh, it just has global really live stream. On. Like no, we wanted to make it feel really big. Okay, yeah, you yeah. know how it is. Just brand it really big. <laughs> go and watch this show. I th- I'm going to have to go to one of these shows. For kingandcountry.com, for this, A Drummer Boy Christmas, and then they are on the road all of next year, which I mentioned a little earlier. When your last name is Smallbone, my name is Bone. Bones. Bones. Yeah. Did you ever consider the Smallbones as a band name? Would you come to a show with the band name Smallbones? You know who did consider it? Matt Hales, Aqualung, considered mm. it. He was very serious about it because he, he, he we were developing sort of the band 
with him as sort of guiding us through it. Um, and he was like, yeah, you should just be called small bones or small bone. Yeah. Singular. Mm. We, we opted to not because mm. of all of the, I probably had, I was dominating the bone world. Yeah, well, we innuendo. We, yeah, we homeschooled for a reason with that last mm, name. Got it. You know what I mean? Amy knows um, another small bone. What's the situation there with that guy? Who's that? Our dad's brother's son. Wait, <laughs> he's, he's your our cousin. cousin. He's our cousin. He's oh, I just cousin. want to say the most complicated cousin. way. Got but, it. You but know how? Named Ian. <laughs> yeah, everybody kind of looks like y'all look similar. Like Bobby, you've said they look like people you, go but, up to him ma- thinking it's but me. But Matt, yes, he'll be. He was at the grocery store literally the other day, and he told me. That someone said, are you, are you Bobby Bones? And he's like, because, I mean, he, small bones, sometimes they uh-huh. just hear the bone part, and then they see the glasses and the hair, and they think it's him. And he That's has a, a very point. thick accent. Yes, yeah. very. I so, also thought he was your brother because of the last name. Yeah. Do you well, have another we brother? The genetic, gene, the genetic pool is there's, pretty There's shallow. seven kids in our family. Who did I meet on an airplane once? Me. <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> you. The Southwest Air. No, that, yeah, that was me. You're so much Josh, better looking now. Josh Kerr, thank you. Yes, the little now? mustache. What yeah. Do you mean now? Because I saw him then and I was like, man. But now. <laughs> He's matured. That was you sitting behind me on that flight. Yeah. We talked. You were super nice. <laughs> to, to LA. I didn't know you were actually in the band. I didn't know you were one of the two. Did you think he was a crew guy? <laughs> he kind of did. You know? You were very kind to the crew guys. Though. I thought. I... <laughs> maybe maybe it's the whole get up. The scarf. The mustache. The thank greased you, back man. hair. It's working, it's working for Bobby. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a vibe. Him. Amy's, Amy's not. Oh, yeah. That was a good, had a good experience there. We talked a, whole, the, a lot. I, I was like, yeah. I was like that guy who does to, merch we for the, for King and Country. Were we going to the Grammys? <laughs> what were we? You no, know, you were going out to the to the show. Yeah, I don't know. I was probably doing something cool, you know. <laughs> and you'd missed your flight. I remember because I remember going. This guy's is awesome. He's on a Southwest flight. You're like, nah, I had the other private thing got canceled. And yeah, you're making that up completely. Okay, look, <laughs> for King and Country, they are here, and they're gonna perform. What are we gonna do? Let's do one of like your songs that you that you like. I don't know. What do you have for me? I don't know. I, I just threw this on you last minute. No, nah, it's all good. We're, we're going to play a song called Love Me Like I Am. Yeah. And uh, featuring, if it's, the, if, the, if it's the recorded version. Yeah, well, she's not with us today, no. but featuring Jordan Sparks. So we, we had a really Joel, lovely... Joel can't quite sing like Jordan. <laughs> oh, you watch. Um, <laughs> no, we, we had this lovely moment where we, we, we enjoy doing features here and there. And, and um, we kind of cold called Jordan and her brother is a supporter of the band and so i think he's a real champion like your wife we got his wife was like <laughs> hey you should actually really do this sister and she's just a awesome human this thing you have over here it's a keyboard it looks like a also a uh what do you the, it's a harmonium it's yeah. like an indian drone instrument you get them on ebay for about 300 dollars. they hand make them can you do it without everybody else playing just show people what it sounds like it, what's that thing called the accordion, accordion it looks like, yeah. it's like a keyboard accordion Sounds magnificent. That's though. awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Well, here they are, my new favorite band. Oh. oh. Yeah. Wait, can Except I, for I, Aqualung. I'm gonna try to come to a show. Holy moly! Uh, for KingandCountry.com, and go go get tickets for the Christmas show at Drummer Boy Christmas, and they're gonna be touring all over next year as well. When I was growing up, Jars of Clay. Ever heard of them? I've, I've heard of them. Mm-hmm. Did, yeah. you ever, did you guys grow up listening to Christian music only, or did you get secular music as well? We got a little bit of both. Yeah. Our parents were, you know, I will say this, when we would go to like go out and drive and my oldest brother or one of my brothers could uh, drive the car, on the radio you did want to change the dial back to the Christian station because if mom and dad came in they may comment on it, mm. but there was there was freedom. We were allowed to we were allowed to listen to both. The Newsboys, ever heard of them? I heard of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Switchfoot, kind of <laughs> on the line a little bit of, of, yeah. of that was an bit, influential band. A little bit of a story with the Switchfoot actually. The I, cause, uh, Joel mentioned I tore my ACL playing basketball. And um, I kind of was, you know, wanting to figure out what was next for me, if that makes sense. Sports was my thing up until that point. And uh, as I was rehabbing my knee, they had just released their album, The Beautiful Letdown. And I remember asking, you know, thinking to myself, I wonder if I could write songs uh, that mean as much to me uh, like yeah. their music does to me. That's interesting that you, because for me, and I don't do music, I do comedy music, but not the same as you guys, obviously, where you guys are good. Um, but the first artist that ever spoke to me writing, you'd hear a song yeah. and you go, oh, oh, wait a minute. Like, I feel like they're speaking for me and to me. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, for me, it was John Mayer, around my yeah. age, sensibility somewhat similar. It was switch, switch foot for you? Switch foot for me. Yeah, because I mean, I, you know, I've heard it said that, you know, an, an artist's job is to, to, to be a poet in some cases, to articulate what another cannot. And then if you give that to them and you give them that song, then that, uh, that song becomes their song. 
And then in return, I think, because uh, if you're writing those songs from your heart, you know, and it means something to you, when somebody responds to that song, I think it inherently makes you feel less lonely, mm. you know? And that's the gift of music to me. I saw Carmen. Ever, ever heard of him? <laughs> wow. Yeah. We've, yeah. A funny, so, funny side note, we, we've been actually working on a feature film that is circles around our uh, uh, immigrant family, particularly a mum, six kids. It's a 90s film. It's ultimately a story about our parents coming from Australia to America and the triumphs and tragedies that happened along the way. And uh, Carmen is actually one of the reasons we're here. <laughs> the old lounge singer, Italian stallion Carmen. Yeah, he, he uh, offered a job to dad over here this is a real story or a movie no, this story? is a real story real that actually story we just a movie. Yeah. we just filmed it like three weeks ago we just finished filming we were in louisville for like two months filming it I, I, i've been to a couple carmen shows they are an experience they are oh, an experience yeah. for sure it's almost like those uh those flipping around at 1 a.m and you you see that on the channel and people are all, that i mean that was the carmen show it was yeah. it was big and you're like what it was a wow wow moment for me yeah uh but you, what you guys do just it's a plus i mean I don't know. I just wasn't expecting it to be so moved by this. And I, I really was. All seriousness. You guys are great. Uh, you're not the same person I do on the Southwest flight. That's all I'm going to say. It's not the same. Uh, I'm glad we're improving yeah. and not, you know. Mm, we're, we've got yeah. scale. I will say this, but boy, can this guy sell some shirts. I, I thought it was the merch guy for, for King and Country. What do, I, what do I know? Yes, Amy. Bobby today has on like a khaki sweater with a black shirt. And like literally y'all's whole vibe is khaki and black. Um, so I feel like you could fit right in today. We should but take another is picture. That, is that... Pre-planned is a group text, or y'all just like sense that? Oh, the whole group. Yeah, this was actually same. we're usually pretty uniform, but this was pretty limber today. We were all like, "Yeah, hey, go casual, go casual." But y'all, it's and if you want to come show up, wasn't that big a deal, right? I mean, if whoever wants to show <laughs> well, up can. It's I mean, a vibe. There's, there's I like been it. there's been th there's been discussions. Uh, you know, it, it's funny. The, the more detailed uh, that you get, the more accidental coincidences happen uh, like this when you don't get yeah. detailed because they kind of know, oh, they've said in the past, we should show up looking like this. So, you know, here we are. Do you still play ball? Uh, I mean, I try to. I'm you not do? that good, but yeah. Do, yeah. Does your leg hurt when it gets cold? No, no. I, I, I didn't do any, I just did strictly the ACL, so I didn't do all the other meniscus and all the other craziness that can take place. So for the most part, they just took the patella tendon, stuck it back in there, and I'm, for the most part, as good as new. My dog, my dog just had that. He's a bulldog. It's, it's the worst. That's what he said. Yeah. Well, he went like this. Oh, <laughs> that was it. But I think that's what he said. Yes. It's the worst. Okay, look, for King of Country, you guys go watch him. Um, Eddie, I'm sorry, your wife. Yeah. Really uh, let hey, him down. Hey, you know what? Uh, yeah, me hey, too. Hey, what, what, what day are you going to Texas? Every day, apparently, that you guys are here of all the days. We're going to be gone. I think we're leaving the day before. So we're I've two heard days, just, two days there's before. nothing that you could do what to just put it back two days, you know? Eddie, Crossroads picture Christmas this. Day. We've made such a song and dance about this. We have other shows. <laughs> what if we flew you to another show? Well, beforehand? then Bobby wouldn't be pleased with that because then he wouldn't be here. That's well, here's the thing: we have another guy on our show named Lunchbox who like milks artists for free stuff mm -hmm. constantly, and so <laughs> I just he feel does. like he's ruined it for everyone. Where. Eddie, would you want them to fly you somewhere? I mean, it'd be awesome, but no, guys, don't go out of your way. Do your tour. Do all that. Hey, well, you guys are going to be around for a while. We're we'll going to talk about it off We don't know that. We don't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I know that. This is it, man. This is, yeah. this is the last tour. Okay, for King and for King, and does anyone ever think it's forking and country. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See when it's all URL, written. especially when you read it that way. Oh, like yes. forking with a fork? Yeah, yes. forking. And, and People Magazine still thinks we're a country band, which is awesome. Like, you know, the they, word do, country, they do the articles and you live in the Nashville. Top, country. Oh, yeah. oh, do you feel like awesome? Do you feel like they cover you more? I, I kind of like it. I just think it's, I think the more kind of blurred lines you can create in genres and collaborations, the then better. you're not in a box. And we're in Nashville. Yeah. That's also what you great. guys do sonically, if I can say so. There, it's all a, an amazing blurred line mm -hmm. yeah. between the instrumentation, the message, the vocal. I mean, it's all, you wouldn't know what genre it is because it kind of is universal. Well, that's what I, I kind of love about this country is you have enough of a like a framework for people to sort of rise in certain genres. But then I feel like with shows like yours, with streaming platforms and whatnot, you're able to actually sort of branch out further. Because I mean, we write love songs, we write life songs and God songs and Christmas songs. It's all in there. But um, it's really Christian radio, particularly early on, was like they were the ones and still are the ones that have sort of helped us rise which has been beautiful if i wanted you guys to play my christmas party what's that cost uh, a lot of money <laughs> yeah, i thought so the whole, right, band, the whole For, band um well everybody but the guy with the bass <laughs>
he's got, wait, he's got awesome you, hair and I'm very out, jealous. He's got it. He's out band leader, But he's got Bobby. it perfectly. It's like perfect brown to blonde. And I'm like, dang, that's I'm jealous of that. And it doesn't make me feel good, so I want him to stay away. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's too perfect. Yes. All right, here they are for King of Country. Thank you guys. Nice job.